From time to time, I like to delve deep into the gaming archives, the history of this industry and re-experience some of the old titles, you know, the type of titles that defined gaming. Pioneers that really set the standard, games that released years, months, or even sometimes days ago. Diligently doing my research and bringing back up some of the controversies that these games were mired in at the time. One such game was impacted very heavily by one of the most severe controversies of the time. A controversy that was so detrimental to this game's rapidly approaching release date that an insane amount of articles and blogs were posted on this topic which then contributed to an untold amount of YouTube videos, each one being much more hungry and ravenous in the details for what this controversy was all about. And all this negative intention sapped this game's release date or more likely contributed to a much more successful release. And that is of course the infamous Puddlegate that troubled Insomniac's release of its first ever licensed game, Spider-Man of 2018 on the PlayStation 4. And while you come with me on this deep, dark, depressing journey of revisiting that controversy and, and the subsequent tragedy of Spider-Man 2018, let me first introduce you to today's sponsor, Manscaped. Look, I'm gonna cut straight to it. If you're developing a little bit of a fro down there, armpit hair, or you got that hot Russian mail order bride in transit and you're afraid that once you pop that bad boy open, she hops out of that shipping container or freight crate and you're afraid that she's gonna look like a Wookiee, Manscaped has you covered. With a sea of amazing products all dedicated to hair removal, if you hit the link down in the description and use code CYNIC for checkout, not only do you get free shipping and I think 10% off, but you're also enrolled in their experimental program where you get to test out some products not yet released to the public. Right now they're trying to patent a, a weed whacker that they're codenaming the joystick polisher which is a little bit confusing as it's nothing but a penis remover. And it's just in time for Pride Month which apparently I am the one thing you wish your sister never said she was and that is a little late. So I'm just gonna wrap this up with use code CYNIC for checkout. The year is 2016 and everyone is excited because Sony just dropped the first trailer of the year in 1080p on YouTube. Not only did they experiment with high quality definition on the website for the first time Ever, but we all got to see our favorite teenager in tight spandex with a monologue reminiscent of every teenage girl movie known to man people see me and think they're safer but it's not really me they're seeing probably for the best knowing everything hinges on a guy from queens sounds as scary as it feels no pressure, right? I'm telling you, if he came out and he said he had a plan to save prom, the monologue completely fits. But all jokes aside, the hype for Spider-Man 2018 was absolutely through the roof. We haven't gotten a Spider-Man game since technically 2014 that was actually released on mobile. Prior to that, we didn't get a good Spider-Man game since all the way back in 2004, originally developed by Treyarch. At least that's what I was told. And actually, whenever you're developing a Spider-Man game, you got two things you have to absolutely nail. The web swinging, and of course, the physics system. And I can't stress enough that those were actually the two main concerns. So much in fact that Sony took it upon themselves to dedicate videos to the development of this game and Insomniac themselves coming out and saying they put so much time and effort into just the web swing. Swinging is the number one thing we had to get right. We bent over backwards to make sure that the player would have an unimpeded experience when they're traversing New York City. We wanted to make sure that we had a simple control scheme that lets you sort of pick up and play and get pretty good at it. But at the same time, we wanted to make sure we had depth in there for an experienced player. And don't mistake me saying it like that as scoffing at them or discrediting Insomniac's hard work. It definitely paid off. And rightfully so. You know, it's the main traversal system. It's the main way of getting about the city. However, when you have multiple people saying the same thing over and over and over and over again, and then that leads to a video dedicated to just those topics to shut all those people up, I found it to be funny. Let's talk about the story. Obviously, spoilers, so if you plan on playing this game before the sequel comes out and you have yet to play it, then maybe skip ahead. But it's a little bit of a mindfuck too, so follow along. But the story kicks off with the apprehension of Wilson Fisk, which then kicks off a series of events that slowly spirals the balance of the city's criminal underworld completely out of control. Once Fisk is put away, a power vacuum starts to form, with a new gang emerging that refers to themselves as simply the Demons. And this gang starts to raid Fisk's weapon caches and hideouts to supply their own war, and eventually we come to realize is a war directed at Norman Osborne, the city's mayor. And the gang the demons are headed by none other than Mr. Negative, who's really the philanthropist Martin Lee, founder of the Feast Homeless Shelter. The same institution made Parker, obviously Peter Parker's aunt, works at, causing Peter's personal life and his superhero persona to slowly collide, at least on one personal front, since he's trying to keep the division between Spider-Man and Peter out of Aunt May's reality. Meanwhile, on a more directly related front, Peter's interning under Dr. Octavius, who's working on his octopus arms that are very famous. And it's through these direct interactions that you actually see Otto's own rage and frustration on a personal level directed at Norman. And although we don't quite know it yet and over a slow period of time, it's this rage, this anger, this personal vendetta that not only Otto has, but Martin Lee has where they start to work together. And in this version of Insomniac's 
telling of Spider-Man and the Sinister Six, they all work together to take down Norman Osborn, or at least make an attempt. And I would say to this day, Insomniac has handled the story phenomenally well. They have not done any type of licensing project in over 20 years. They've only dealt with original IPs, their own stuff that they have made from the ground up. And to handle a character like Spider-Man that's been around for decades, that has had countless issues in comic books and has only slowly gotten more and more popular over the years through all the films that have come out. The fact that they've been able to create their own original version of this, have Peter and Spider-Man's personal worlds collide, as well as set up for the DLC, and then set up for Miles' spin-off game, is just a testament to how talented and dedicated the team at Insomniac really are. Of course, there are some shortcomings, and of course, there can always be an argument that they were so ambitious that in some aspects, they left us wanting more, and they could have did more with a variety of side content, or even cutting out some villains, that way they can be a little bit more thorough with others. I still feel like the time that we spend with Rhino, Scorpion, and even Vulture and Electro are very short. Although to be fair, all things considered, Insomniac didn't have any guarantee themselves that they would be working on a follow-up, a spin-off game, or even a sequel of any kind. So ultimately, we got an all-or-nothing type of Spider-Man game. And I think for what it was, the story did a phenomenal job especially that ending that ending i think really tested how far peter was willing to go on a personal level what he was willing to sacrifice to really be the hero of this world and i would love to see that carried over even further into the sequel because obviously he's fighting the symbiote and his own personal demons so it'd be cool to see how that's going to translate in the sequel you'd be hard pressed to see any real complaints about the gameplay although some can be made of course there isn't too many variations on stealth takedown you can't take them down from walls when you're taking down strongholds or hideouts you can't take out all the waves in silence after that first wave if you clear it out completely without being found then somehow an alarm is triggered i still say while there are a lot of gadgets you aren't really incentivized or pushed into experimenting with said gadgets the combat flow is great it's satisfying and of course there's enough there with how fluid it is to really allow players to experiment in any way shape or form that they desire but there's no push you know if you go back and play the game now I Obviously, hindsight is 2020, and you can criticize everything. The combat is great, don't get me wrong. However, if I was to sacrifice the amount of gadgets in this game for more practical use, kind of like what they did with Miles Morales, we don't have so many gadgets. However, each tool can be used for a specific enemy for a specific job. It's much more useful. I'd rather have a limited inventory that actually has more use than a more expanded inventory that has less use. And in this game, once you find things that work, you don't really experiment that much. Or maybe that's just a person personal flaw. I've gotten the Platinum Trophy for this game three times ultimately, and it's not until recently that I started playing around with the gravity well or messing around with, well really just that. For me, what worked the most was obviously the web shooters, the impact webs. You can get creative and have some fun times with the trip mines, and then the other ones that I found the most effective were the electric webs. Besides that, you're not really pushed to play with the spider bot or even the anti-gravity or gravity well. While they do have applications, of course, you're really messing with that stuff out of your own volition out of your own curiosity there is no enemy type that has a particular weakness towards any of that which is unfortunate and of course if you go back and play it there's quite a lot of repetition there's not too much in terms of side content in terms of variety the only real storyline that's here is when you follow the side missions that deal around Tombstone. I mean, of course, you can take out all the challenges pertaining to Taskmaster, and then you fight him once or twice, but he doesn't really have that much of an impact. His fights ultimately are a little lackluster, to say the least. I would have loved a bigger finale, or even, like I said, in terms of the story, to see more of Vulture or Electro. But ultimately, what I would love to see the most transitioning into Spider-Man 2 is I love Insomniac's ambition. Do not get me wrong, but I would love it if they tamed it just a little bit in order Order to give us more quality you know don't give us quantity give us quality while the combat in spider-man 2018 is fantastic we had strongholds for the demons for fist and then for prisoners so you had three and sable so you had four types of strongholds that you had to deal with and then you had five crimes that you had to take out in each section and there's not that much variety in the, in the crimes that are performed of course that particular thing the variety in crimes and how often you got to take care of them was altered and addressed and changed in miles morales so i don't 
expect it to be that much of an issue in Spider-Man 2. But the core thing to take from here is less repetition, more experimentation, double down on the combat, give us gadgets that have tactical applications while also giving us the fluidity of this game where we can experiment and make seamless transition from the type of combat that we're initiating in. Whether we're dealing with gadgets, hand-to-hand -hand combat, web swinging, or if we just want to throw in a little bit of parkour. The parkour is very fluid in this game and I would love to see all that doubled and maybe even tripled down on Spider-Man 2. But let me know what you guys think. Have you guys ever played Spider-Man 2018 whether on PlayStation 4, 5, or even PC? Let's talk down in the comments section. Are you excited for Spider-Man 2? I mean it seems like everyone else is so naturally you got to be a Sony fan and you know, be hyped up. Like always, guys, my name is Cynic, and uh, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you on the next video if I decide to upload again.